Good morning everyone. Welcome back to the third chapter of website UI designing course. So in the previous chapter we basically like uh, studied about HTML and CSS and that was a time where we will be like where like we were making up a static website but in real world in real scenario that does not work. In real world you need a dynamic website which changes its content as per the user actions or as per the date. So how do we actually create a dynamic website? So the answer lies over here. We created using JavaScript. So before, before we just go ahead and like discuss about the practical stuff, I have few things for you which you sh people should know. So we have already discussed about this thing in our previous chapter. Let have let's let us have a revision. So for website development, you need to understand three languages which are the base. One is HTML, which defines the web content. It is nothing but an XML based tag based language where you define the HTML tag, you close it, you define the head tag, you close it, you define the body tag, you close it, and similarly so on. Then you have a CSS file which defines the layout of your website. So we have already discussed about it. We in the previous chapter we, we like like we had created up a component of a website in which like we had a tube light effect, a glowing effect on a text called as we welcome you. And the third language which you should know for website designing is JavaScript. So this is something which defines the behavior of the page. Rather, I say that this is something using which you make your website dynamic. So this was like a base about like creating up the website. We do have a lot of other technologies which have been built up such as Bootstrap, such as jQuery, such as Angular, such as React.js. So when I say that we people only need to learn these three, what do I mean? I mean that these three are the basic languages. And when we say that we have so many other languages, then what are they? They are something like this. So Bootstrap is nothing but it is a framework which has been built up using CSS and JavaScript because there are a lot of common operations. For example, when you say that you are creating up a website, say I will just go ahead and open up my website that will be HTTPS and then colon and then www.host-tune.perform.org. So most of the websites have some common properties. So what are the common properties? Say for example, in this case, we have a menu bar and the menu bar is defined by this white line, this, this white line. So we have a menu bar where we have boom, where we have join, where we have disclaimer, where we have data privacy and where we have terms. So this menu bar looks like this on the desktop, but if I go ahead and change this view to uh, mobile view, you can see that this menu has been changed up to this button, right? So how, how did people recognize that the screen size has been like uh, shifted to a smaller width and now they want the menu to, uh, like inside a button which is something like this and when you click on this button the menu comes out like this. So it is now now nowhere in a horizontal line rather than it is in a like vertical line. So this is how like these these are like few functionalities like which are uh, common in almost every website if I go ahead and like if you go ahead and see in some other website also you will find the same thing so similarly like there are a lot of components which are being used in day to day life for example there is another component called as carousel so this is nothing but a carousel if you see over here on my screen this is a carousel so if you click on this button it will go to the left and if I click on this button, it will go to the right. So again, like this is a very common component and these components are built up using two languages, which are CSS and JavaScript. Because they are so common components, they have already been built up using a framework called as Bootstrap. So Bootstrap gives you this framework and like using Bootstrap, you can implement it without like, uh, 
like implementing css and javascript without writing the code by yourself you just need to write a one liner code or you just need to understand how you need to put up the items of the carousel or maybe the menu bar so the man, like the menu bar which i showed you in bootstrap you call it a nav nav bar that is a navigation bar n a v dash bar so whenever you define an html you can give the class as nav bar and as you have already included the files you can implement it so we will talk about it let us under, like understand try to understand it on an upper level as of now saying that bootstrap is something which is built over css and javascript so this is a framework what is a framework framework is a wrapper of code which has been done on a previously defined code so there are two ways either you can create this carousel by yourself using javascript and css or else you can say i am using bootstrap which is already a implementation of css and javascript in the similar way like react js is nothing but a framework for a single page application so on the in the very first chapter while we discussed about website designing we discussed what exactly is a single page application so react js is for single page application facebook is an application which is built over react js right similarly like we have angular so angular is something like which is also for a single uh, page application but it uses typescript so typescript is not javascript it is a super set of javascript so in javascript we do not have a strict type of an object so like do not go deep and do not get confused if you do not understand this word that is okay there is a term called as variable in any language so variable is something a container in which you can put up a string you can put up a number you can put up something to store so whenever you have some data data is data can be string it can be number it can be a special character right so when you have some data you have to put it into a variable and that variable is not checked like when we say that we have to put up a string inside a variable then in typescript the variable type should be a very uh, string type but in javascript it, it it will be only a var type or like we can say a let a uh, variable name and then we can define any value into it so it is not strictly type anyhow do not go deep into it let us be on ground next thing is jquery jquery is again a super set or like a framework which has been built over javascript to make this language easier so if we have to write a code of two lines in javascript we might do that in one line in jquery with is so it even like makes the animation which we can do using javascript easy so this is nothing but a library which has been written over javascript to make it easy to implement right so the next thing which i want to discuss is what can a browser compile so what what exactly can a browser compile so when i go over here on my uh desktop if you see in my desktop i have this folder which is website so this folder website has few files and one of them is html dot html and second is dot css which we created in our previous chapter if i double click this website i just go ahead and open up the website which we created in the previous chapter right so this file is placed on my system and as i open this file this html code and this css code because this css code link is already there in html so we have already discussed this that this css code link is already there in html right so the html knows where the css file is so it picks both of them and it sends it to the browser and what will the browser do browser will read the html browser will read the css and it will compile it what is compilation so there is a term called has high level language let me open up my text notepad and let me write hhl so it is high level language so what what is this term 
this term means you are working on a language which is high level language and this language will later be compiled by some compiler or some interpreter so for for your information i have made a detailed video on compiler and interpreter in my computer architecture series and like there we have also discussed about http and various other things which are commonly used and like which should be known by every developer or an it engineer or maybe a test engineer so coming coming back to our case we are working on a high level language such as javascript like in today's world most of the developers work on high level language like i would say 99% of the developers work on high level language these languages are compiled by various compiler or interpreter so for example if you are working on java you need to install java jdk jdk is java like development kit and jre is java runtime environment you install java and then you code on java when you code on java and you execute the program that program is executed by the compiler java compiler and then you get the result in the similar way the java script html and css all the three languages are compiled by the browser what is browser browser is nothing but this chrome chrome is your browser or we can say internet explorer is the browser so all these browser have this capability of like uh, compiling these languages and like giving you the result in front of you so this is the result the page which you see in front of you is the result of the html code and the css code now if i go ahead and like discuss about javascript more what is a javascript javascript is not java javascript is different java is different java needs its own environment when i go to cmd and if i say java dash dash version so it shows me a version because i have jdk installed on my system so i can write up a java program and make up a jar executable file and run it on the system because i have jdk or jre installed you can see that it has java sc runtime installed even if i do not have this java installed javascript will work in browser because browser compiles javascript the words may be the same but the language are entirely different you are you cannot compare an apple with an orange as always said so javascript is different and java is different java is a a, a language which works on any system which like have the environment set up but javascript is a file which has the code of javascript and it works on browser right it is a client side language so what what is a client side language let us understand this more deeply and let us understand how exactly the web works and then we will move forward towards like implementing javascript and making our website dynamic so how how exactly the browser works the browser can be internet explorer it can be this it can be opera it can be mozilla it can be chrome so how exactly this work as soon as you type in the url such as this and hit an enter there will be a location on the server this this domain is nothing but a combination of an ip address and a port so you can say that this is nothing but an ip address say 10.5.6. this and and a port which usually is port 80 for http and 443 for https so this colon this colon defines that after this ip address we have this port so before this colon we have the ip address and after this colon we have the port and this domain is converted into this format this domain is converted into an ip and port format by the dns which is domain name server like from where like i have bought up this domain from godaddy so uh, like this domain will hit to the godaddy's dns server it will resolve it into an ip address and port combination and then the request will hit to the ip like that particular server system and on that system what we will have is we will have a file called as index.html so the first file which runs 
on a browser is not home.html like we have created home.html we double click, click it and it that open on our system because it is on our system but the first file which the web server looks for because when you are hitting up a system and asking for some results the system should be capable of taking in a request and giving you the results right and that server is nothing but an apache server which is an open source server it can be some other server also but yes in at here at host-tune-perform.org we people basically focus on open source technologies and that's why we talk about apache server and it is also the com most commonly used server like 90 percent of the people use apache server so home.html is not the first file it will be index.html which will be the first file so we will discuss about it i am just giving you a glimpse how exactly things work so whenever you hit a url from a browser a request is hit to the machine and in this machine we have the first file which is index.html and this file is brought up from the server to your client machine entirely so your server does not compile the html file it what it will do is it will just give this file html file complete file the complete css file back to you so you will have it completely and when you will have it completely this browser your browser will compile it and show it to you as a website this website is shown up like this complete file comes back to your browser and then this website is being shown up right so when i say like this html contains all these files so these all files will come back to your browser and how i can check it i can check it in the network tab so i will just clear everything and just make a refresh button so you see over here what all things are coming from your server so from your server you are getting all of these files you have a script file then you can see that you are getting some icon file that is the favicon what is favicon favicon is this bulb which we are showing at the very up uh, this this logo is called as favicon in terms of website designing so if i go back out here and we check other files so you see that what all things are coming you are you can see a bootstrap dot min dot css is coming back to your browser why because we have included it right so in the similar way like we have font awesome coming font awesome wired is coming because we have included it so all of these files files come back to your browser and the browser compiles it so the browser gets this file and it compiles it and after compiling then it displays you the result so we have four steps at first the browser hits an http request the server returns the file the third is the browser compiles it and the fourth is like it displays you the website but after doing this like we even have some server side languages what is a server side language server side language is something which is compiled on the server such as php such as node.js such as c sharp for iis then we have servlets java servlets then we have django for python so so these are some languages using which we can build our server side code so what is server side code say for example you are logging in into a website say facebook.com and whenever you hit your username and password the username and password goes to the server like there will be a post request and this post request will go to the server so what is this post request so how exactly the client and the server communicate so the client and the server communicate using a protocol which is called as http what is http http is hypertext transfer protocol i am reiterating myself that i have prepared up a lecture on computer architecture and that series have a lot of things about like the most commonly used things in computer networks and computer architecture so you can go ahead and see my video over http over there so i will give you a shorter game over here as well so http is nothing but a hypertext transfer protocol and using this protocol your client and the server communicate with each other so the client hits a request to the server it is an http post request your username and password go back to the server 
the code written in Node.js or PHP. So PHP is, is something which you should learn if you are looking out to learn WordPress. So with WordPress, you would be inquiring of PHP. Node.js is the booming technology and like is something which is on JavaScript. So JavaScript can also run on server and like this was not possible some years back. It, it happened like a guy, I don't remember the name, but like what he did is he brought up the compiler of the browser. He picked up the compiler of the browser and he like put up put, put it up on this machine, on the server. And he said that now you can run the JavaScript code and compile it and like execute it on a machine rather than on a browser. So this was not possible before Node.js, but after Node.js you can like even script your server in JavaScript. So we might have a tutorial on this as well later on. Let, let us like take up a bigger picture of the technologies involved and like what we need to learn and how we need to learn in future. So whenever you like send in your username and password, this goes to the JavaScript code, Node.js code or the PHP code or the Python code. The Python code will check its database if the user is authentic and if it is authentic, it will return only yes or no. It will say yes, the user is authentic or it will say no, the user is not authentic. It will not send the entire file. This file will, will be compiled on the server. It will not be compiled on the browser. No. Request goes, compilation happens and only the data comes back. And then you are able to log in to the next website. When you log into the next website, the URL changes. Then, then the browser hits another request to the Apache server. The files, HTML files, again comes back to your server for your home page. And then like that home page.html is being displayed to you on the browser. It's being compiled by the browser and is displayed to you on the browser. So this is basically the phenomena and the difference between the client side and server side languages. So next is what is HTTP. We have already discussed the server and the client communicate with each other using HTTP protocol. So what is HTTP you can see over here whenever we type in an uh, URL we have an HTTPS over here. So HTTPS is Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. HTTP is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So we are saying we need the data from this system. This is nothing but a system, a computer system, which has Apache installed on it and that's why it is a server. So we need these HTML files from this system and we need to get it using HTTPS scheme. This is nothing but a scheme or a protocol. So we can talk to a server using various schemes, we can talk to a server using FTP, we can talk to a server using XMPP. So there are a lot of protocols which can be followed up, but basically in website designing, you would be dealing up with HTTP and HTTPS. So if I come back to my browser and go next, so HTTP has some kind of methods. What are these methods? So whenever I say that, the client machine is talking to this server machine using HTTP. So the server machine should know what kind of request it is. If a client machine just needs the HTML, the CSS or the JavaScript code, it will get a GET request. Please give me these files. It is a GET request. When the browser needs to send some data, to the server, it will hit a POST request. It will say, I am posting this data to the server. Whenever it needs to update some data on the server, it will put a PUT request. It says that the server already has the data. Please put the new data instead of the old data. Whenever you need to delete some data, you hit a DELETE request from the client. So in the similar way, like there is a very subtle difference between put and post. Again, if you want to know this difference, I have already created up a video on the difference between put and post in computer architectural series. You can go ahead and, add, go ahead and see it. So out of these HTTP methods, I will suggest you to go ahead and read 
something about get and post by yourself because these two methods are the most commonly used method and in like say 95% of the cases you will see only these two methods whenever you need something from the server you need you hit a get request when you need to put something on the server you need a you hit a post request so next let us go ahead and start doing some practical work on javascript to understand it so till now we prepared up something like this we had something like this let me go ahead and like delete all the extra stuff uh, just so that we do not have a lot of things out here so let me just keep up this division which is the cube light one which is the upper uppermost one and this chat box one right let me delete these two things let me delete uh, this sticky one and this background color so now we have this html file which is uh less more populated so you can see that it has in the body tag we have a very less code we have just two divisions one is the upper one and the lower one uh fixed icon I, if i just go ahead and click it so we just have this thing now say for example in this website we need to add an area over here which shows us the date so i always say people whenever you start learning javascript the first code which you should learn is the date code for example when you start learning java people learn hello world program so when you start learning javascript you start learning with typing in the today's date program so we will do exactly the same so i will just go ahead over here and say div division i will create a new division out here and in this division i will give it a class so this class is nothing but an attribute of this html component right so i will give a class and say this class equal to uh, let's say this is date time class and after saying it as a date time class i will move down and inside this class i will just mark up a paragraph and in this paragraph i will give up the date so the date is today's date what is today's date today's date is 0105 2021 so i will just say 01 then 05 and then 2021 right i will just save it i will minimize it so inside this division inside paragraph i have written up a date i go ahead and hit an enter so i see a date out here you can see i see a date out here which is 01052021 but what if i go ahead and change up this date so i will just right click over here and say adjust date and time and over here i will just just remove this set time automatically and change my time manually so i will change the date today's date to be 6th of may rather than 5th of 1st of may so today is 1st of may i will change it to 6th of may from 1st of may and just hit a change button so this date has been changed to 6th of may now right and if i go ahead on my uh, like browser and hit an enter my website still shows us the old date which is 15 2021 why it shows us this because we have embedded up this date we have put up this date hard coded date so this is a static date we need to make it dynamic date as this date changes this date should also get changes which which date changes this date like which is like just below me you can see like i am over here but still you should be able to see it but i will like just just change up this date to a dynamic one now let me delete it and let me paste up my code So now you can see up the code from line number twenty-seven till line number thirty-three. Let us just see up this code, and rather than typing a lot of this, let us just type D. Let me not delete it. Let me cut it and say just D. Right. So this is a good code now. So in this code, previously in the paragraph, we we like 
we had put up the date manually so i typed in the date over here right but now i am deleting it i do not have anything over here this is nothing but an inner html as per javascript so what what is javascript so we have given this paragraph an id date and in uh, below it we are typing in an html tag which is script so in html javascript is integrated with html using this script tag i am repeating myself javascript is integrated with html using the script tag so you can see in the script tag we have we have this script and what is this script doing it has a variable where is nothing but a variable d and inside this variable so what is variable variable is just a container it can hold up anything in javascript it can hold up a string it can hold up a text it can hold up a number it can hold up a special character it can hold up a date it can hold up anything so we are saying new date this is an object so please learn this whenever you see a new keyword this is a keyword again where is a keyword the things in blue inside script are keyword so i am saying please declare a variable and inside this variable put please put up the today's date so this is a predefined function in html using which we can put up system date inside a variable so d has today's date now we are saying please from the html document this document defines the html document the html page the dom the document object model which we discussed previously in the previous chapter from that dom from that document please get the element or the component which has an id date which component has the id date which is this so inside an html all the components should have the unique id if it does not have unique id this will pick up the first element having the id date say for example below it we have another p element and this p element looks something like this i create up a p element and in this p element also i give up the id equal to say date so what which one will this pick this will pick up the first one because this is the first one and after picking up the first one it is saying the inner html what is the inner html keyword defines this is the property which defines the things in after this tag this is the inner html of p element so whatever we are typing inside the tag is the inner html so we are saying the inner html should be d which is nothing but the date so let me go ahead and save it and over here let me hit an enter and as i hit an enter you see that the date has been changed to 6th may why it has been changed to 6th may because the date was changed to 6th may over here if i again go ahead and say adjust date and say change over here instead of 6 i select a 4 and say change and let me hit an enter again so if it does not work after hitting an enter what you can do is you can just press control shift and delete on your keyboard and you will get something like this so you need to clear up the caches the browser and everything from the website and again go back over here and hit an enter as you hit an enter you see that it has now become 4th of may let me go back again over here let me say adjust time and let me say set it automatically now so as i set it automatically the date has been changed to 1st may which is the correct date which is it is picking up from the internet if i go ahead and hit an enter again you see that after hitting an enter it has been changed to 1st may right so in your case if you are not able to see up this change there might be a problem with your cache so what you can do is you can just hit control shift and delete and clear all the caches before like hitting an enter so you see that the date has been changed up dynamically now the next thing which we will do is we will minimize like we will make sure that this date is as per our format if you can see that as of now this date has a format in which we have the day we have the month then again the day then the year then the time then the zone we belong to india standard time right so that's why it is gmt this but we do not need 
so much of information i just need a simple date how how i can do it i will just change up this inner html so as of now this inner html is this d i will just change it to this thing what is this thing let us see it so if you see i am saying out of this entire d please just give me the date d dot get date so get date is the function it is a predefined function of date object so out of the entire string you can just get the date in the similar way i am just getting up the month these plus are nothing but they are concatenating different string so here we will have a number then we will have a slash then we will have a number plus 1 so in javascript the month is from 0 to 11 not from 1 to 12 So zero to eleven is not human readable. When you say eleventh month, you always treat it as November, not December. But Java treat it as December, not November. So in Java, zero is for January, not one. One is not for January. So that's why we have taken up d dot get month plus one. Again, we have a slash, and after month we have the year d dot get full year. I will just minimize my screen. I will save it. and let me go back over here and hit an enter as i hit an enter you can see over here that this date has been shifted to 1 5 right so i will come back to my uh, slide and will discuss about few things like one is the script thing which we have already discussed that like you integrate javascript with html using the script tag and second is the document so this document gives you the reference to the entire dom instead of document you could have mentioned up window or you could have mentioned up console say for example uh, instead of document over here if 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 we have a scenario in that scenario if we press a button the window should get closed this window should get closed right so how we can do it i will just create up a button over here and then i will just write up a script which will say window dot close so let us do it i will just create a division at first inside this division i will have a button so i will say button and in this button i will say that the type of this button is again button and this button after we click on this button there should be a function which should be called so remember one thing that the functions end up with something like these round parentheses so these are required for a function so it will like just shoot up this function and inside this button i will give the text of this button which is say close my window as soon as someone clicks on this button the browser should get closed by itself and now i will give a script tag and here in the script tag i will define a function in javascript how do we define a function and what is a function function is a collection of statements which will be executed as soon as the function is hit so here the function is this how will i define it i will define it using a function keyword after this i will say my function remember one thing this f is capital over here and this f is capital over here so javascript is case sensitive if we make it small it will not work as of now let us make it small and i will just hit an enter and say window dot close so now instead of document dot something we are having window dot something right you can see that we have window dot something so at the end we have the code which you can see up from line number uh, just a second from line number 36 till line number uh, 44 so this is the code which is there which which will be like closing up the window as soon as the button is clicked so let let me try it but this should not work because this function has a capital f and this has a small f right so let me zoom back and let me open this website so i will just right click over here say open in chrome and this has opened up let me make up make it up as a mobile view so as i click on close so one thing you need to know now another thing which you need to know now 
is this console tag. So we have discussed about the element tags which has the DOM structure. We have discussed about network which has all the resources which are like taken up from the server. Then we have not discussed about anything else. The third tab which we are discussing is the console tab. So any information which you need to give any error which you need to show up to the developer or something like that will be shown up over here. For example, when I click on the close tab, so this close tab is marking up a reference to a function which is my function with an F capital and it is saying that this function is not defined. Uncaught reference, my FUNC is not defined at HTML button click on click. So this function is not defined over here. I will just go ahead and change this to small f to a capital F. You can see I have changed it to a capital F. Let me save it and refresh it. And now as soon as I hit the close button, my browser goes off because it says that window please go off. So a good point and an important point I need you to focus on over here is this like you what on what all things you can take control using JavaScript. You can take control over the HTML and CSS document and you can also take control of the browser. So you can change the things within an HTML DOM body and you can also take control of the browser and say please resize my browser, please close it, please change the height of my browser, something like that. So the thing is like this particular word, these are the keywords which are defined in JavaScript and like these are the control taking objects. What control you are taking, you are taking control of a window. Again, the document is also the part of a window. If I will say window dot document, this should also work. So window is the root root element. Even the document is the part of the window. So this will also work. If I go ahead and save my document. If I go to my website, let me open it in Chrome again. If I open it in Chrome again, you can see the date is still there. The date is still there. Why it is still there? Because document is also actually the part of window. But JavaScript gives us this feasibility to use it straight away rather than window we can just type in document and this makes our code look more cleaner. So we know that as of now we are talking to the document not the window and here we are talking directly to the window. Right. So this is how you are making up the code look good. So the next part which I want you to know is DOM and BOM. So DOM is the document object model, BOM is the browser object model. You were using JavaScript when you say document dot something. So you are like taking control of the document DOM, like which is the HTML and the CSS code. But when you are saying you are taking control of the browser model, so you, you can use various functions such as window dot open, window dot close, window dot move to, window dot resize. Similarly, other than window, you have few other things such as screen. You can say screen dot width. Then we have location, which is location dot href, which will give you the URL. Location dot href will give you this URL, this URL of your browser, which you are currently at. So location dot href will give you this URL. Right. So then you can use something called as history. So you can say that you can go to the previous page. For example, over here, when, when we go from one page to another page, we have this button. So whenever we traverse from one website to another website, say I go to google.com and if I want to go back, so like this browser maintains up an history. So this is the back button. I can click on the back button and I can go back. So this back button can be clicked up using this code uh, via this statement which is history dot back. So this history dot back statement does this. The next thing is navigator. Navigator dot platform gives you on which platform you are like you, you if you are on an Windows operating system or Linux operating system something like that. Then you can pop up an alert saying if you if you want to confirm something or you are alerting something. What is the difference between confirm and alert? Let 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 us see it. 
so in the same in the same window rather than typing in window dot close i will just type in alert so i will just say confirm and i will say i have pressed the close window button because obviously whenever you are closing a window you you will not close it directly you always need a confirmation because someone might click the window close button mistakenly so we are just saying please confirm like over here you just 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 saying and confirm button so here we will also use something called as if and else so these are the controlling statements i will say if the confirm is true so i will say please confirm if the confirm is true please type a message in console dot write or i think that the right word will be uh, just a second please it will be console dot log so i will say console dot log user accepted the close confirmation and if the user says no then i will say then i will say that console dot log user denied closing off so here let me type in one more thing and i will say window dot close so it will only close the window if the user will say yes so as soon as the person will hit this button it will ask do you want to uh, close it so rather than typing something like this i will just type do you want to close it so if if the user says yes the window will be closed or, and 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 a message will be typed on the like logs but you cannot see it because the window will get closed and if the user says no then the message will be typed on saying that the user denied so for a better code let me comment this in javascript you can comment a line so commenting a line means this will not be compiled by the browser this is just a comment for our reference so this is a single line comment in java you can do a multi line comment using something like this so whenever you start up with this symbol and you end up with this symbol anything between this will be a comment no matter how many lines it will these all things will not be executed this is multi line comment but this is single line comment here if you like write something over here it will give us an error saying that this is a this is some wrong statement which you have written up and like this will be compiled up right so now this makes sense let me save it and let me go back and re hit and enter let me change it to the mobile view which is a good view as soon as i has hit the close button it gives me a confirmation message which has two options do you want to close it okay or cancel if i cancel it there will be a message which will be shown on the console because i have said console dot log it is saying user denied closing off because i said cancel but if i again click on close button and then click on okay the window will get closed another thing which i want you to see over here is let me go back and say open with chrome i have this window again and if i open it again in another tab say so now we have two tabs and let me again shift it to mobile view and after shifting it to mobile view let me hit on the close button and say cancel you have the lock button why i am showing you again let me hit the close button again again and say okay this time the window is not closed because we have two tabs right and this time it gives us an warning saying the script may close only the windows that were opened by them right so if 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 we go ahead and like say close button over here and say okay, this window gets closed 
because this was the initial window which we opened up but we opened up another tab manually and the script do not have any like <coughs> reference to this new tab that's why like it was not able to close it i just wanted you to know about it because <coughs> i'm sorry there might there might be instances with you such as these where like you might get hurdles and you might think like this should have worked but why it is not working so there are instances like this which you need to handle in your website so coming back to the picture dom versus bomb uh, the next thing over here is like after confirmation there is something called as alert like in this pop up alert only there is there are two types one is confirmation and one is alert so in confirmation you saw two buttons yes or no so you are confirming you are asking the user do you confirm it yes or no but alert is something you are just alerting it this has happened and the user has a single button say okay or fine but but like the user cannot do anything because that is an alert because that has already happened so this is the difference between confirmation and alert in the similar way you have few other things you can do something called as window dot set timeout this is a very important function what this function does is it says that please please execute this function after this much time so whenever there is a requirement for you to put up a delay before hitting or triggering some function you can use up this function and the last but not the least is cookies so what are cookies cookies are something which are a part of browser your browser has something called as cookies uh, so if i just go ahead and like show you up the options of any browser you can see up the settings of any browser you you can you can say find out something called as cookies over here so you can see that you have cookies and other site data cookies are nothing but a key value pair of data which are being saved up by a browser you do not see them so these data are sent up by the server and like your browser tracks your server and your user using these cookies so you might have a user id or an authentication bearer or something like that but majorly you can say that it has a key value pair which is being stored in the browser database <coughs> so cookies are the part of the browser and you can also handle these cookies using java script so what can a java script do so as of now we have seen a lot of things we have changed the inner content of an html so the java script can change the html content java script can change the html attributes so what are html attributes so these are html attributes say you are saying this button is of type button you can change the type of this button in the similar way you can change the class of this particular element so you can change the attributes using html attributes are these class id but type etc of an html tag then you can change the css type so obviously we have not given an example of this but yes you can change the type of css using javascript you need to say document dot get element like this something like this let me give you an example so here let's let us take a scenario where as soon as the person hits the button this button so what should happen the uh, upper date should hide so i will say hide date hide date i will take a scenario of hiding upper date let me delete all of these if and else statement and inside this function i will say document dot get element till here let me paste it so i have the date element and i will say dot style dot display so in css we have a property called as display we have already discussed about it and whenever we say that display equal to none the particular element goes hidden so i will say display equal to none and as i say it let me come back over here let me hit an enter as i click on high date it gives me an error saying uncaught reference none is not defined at function so to resolve this error 
this null like should be binded in a double quote so this was the error like i forgot about it so now this is a string you are saying that this none goes to this particular like statement which is document dot get element date dot style dot display you are saying that the display should become none now right let me let me save up this document again let me go back here hit and enter and now as i hit the hide date button so the date has been hidden dynamically so this is like the basic purpose and like we can even manage the css properties using this using like this dot style dot display so you have a lot of other things like which you can do and and the last thing is like javascript is a language which is being used to help deliver complex and dynamic web scenarios which have which we have been discussing from so long so again we have discussed about javascript functions we have even discussed about if and else then if i go ahead and say that javascript via external file this is very important why this is important as of now you can see that in our script from line number 29 till line number uh, say 33 we have a script tag not 33 32 we have a script tag similarly we have a script tag again so we have written two script tags and similarly if we need other script tags in a document because in real world the documents are very big right so it becomes a very cumbersome task for a person to do something like this so what what exactly you can do is you can write all of your function all of your things into some other file and name it as file.js and rather than just having so many script tags inside this particular single html document you can have a script tag at the top so this is what we are doing you can you can see out here that we have a link statement using link statement we are linking up a css file but using a script tag and inside the script we have an attribute called as source we just mention the js so this file is placed up at an server so that's why we are saying please fetch it from a server using http protocol and this server is here in in this server you go to js folder after that go to platform that js please bring up this file platform dot js back to my system in this very similar way you can see that we have a js file for bootstrap so bootstrap has both css file and js so i have already told you like this is a framework over css and js that's why we have both css and js so we have included both of them and this is the reason that both of the files are already there if i go ahead and like copy up this source and directly paste up it in the browser say like this and hit an enter you can see that this is nothing but a text file in the browser you can see this is a text file which have a lot of functions lot of data and like this data is being will be used you can see that there is a function called as this so i will just control f and say function you can see how many functions are there right so in this similar way like there are a lot of things you can like see out in this file by yourself so again you can even check the css file this is also not nothing but a text file which is being linked up which will be brought up and given up to your system so this is a text file you can see that this is nothing but a text file right this is nothing but a text file so if i go back again and here in our scenario if i want these things out so what i will do is i will just take up this function out let us take up this function out and let me just create up a file on my desktop so my desktop has this folder which is website let me create up a new file and say it as say functions dot js right let me hit an enter so this is a javascript file and javascript file should always have a icon like this right so i can just go ahead right click over and say edit in notepad and let me add up this function over here so i have added up just this function which is my function over here let me close up this file 
and here in my HTML, let me go over here and just copy this link statement and paste it. Let me copy this script and let it be a script and rather than a href, I will mark it a source and in this source, the name of the file which will go is this. Let me copy the entire name, come back over here and just paste it. So I have pasted it. So we have this script ready. Let me close the script tag so that our head tag does not give an error. Now things look good. <coughs> And we do not have the function over here, but we have the function in another file. We do not have it in the same file. I have saved it. Let me come back. Let me re like publish my website. We have the date. Let me click on hide date. And you see it is still working, right? Even though we have it in a separate file, but still it is working. So the next thing which I want to discuss today is HTTP post request using HTML. So we we'll just get why I wanted to discuss this. So like HTTP post request is sent in HTML via forms. So form is a type like you can understand as in a plain English language. What is a form? Form is just a paper which has a lot of things. You need to fill the form and you need to give it back. So, so for example, like you people must have seen in most of the websites we have a contact us page so for example i will be going up to a website called as tatvamadvisors.com so this is a website for ca consultants so if i go and click on i agree there is there are a lot of pages and there is a page called as contact us if i just go ahead and click on contact us page you can see that we have a form this is nothing but a form. You have to fill your name, you have to fill your email, you have to fill your subject, you have to fill your message. In the same way, this form has two parts. Like one is the input and it is saying that you need to fill up the name. And the second is just the submit button. So here we have only these two parts. One is the name and then you are just having a submit button. So as soon as you click on the submit button, this request will go as a post request so we have already discussed that http has a lot of types and get and post are the most useful types getting is like getting the files from server and posting is posting of the data because here in forms we are putting up some value you are taking up some value from the user so as of now i will be just putting up my name over here and say anand goel and i will just put up my email address something like this and then I will just say the subject saying that I want to open a company. And at the end, I will just write up a message saying that, hey, Tatvam advisors, please help me in like building or like registering up my company name so i will just press f12 to see what exactly will happen at the back end so let me press f12 to open up the console and i have something like this so if i just go ahead and see the network tab now and if i click on send message right if i click on send message so you see that this send message is going up over here and if you see the type of request it is post right so you can see in front of you that this is a form and like this is going as a post so what is the code which is running behind it see this is going to send mail dot php so this is the server and this is going to send mail dot php and the type is post and it has a body it should have a body because the type is post so if i just scroll down the screen on this section itself so if you see up my screen, I will scroll down on the headers part. And if I scroll down, it says that these are the requests. This is the response header. And then if I scroll down, so we have the body, form body. So you can see out here. So it has everything. It has the name, it has the email ID, it has the subject, it has the message. 
So this message has been sent to Tatvam advisors. And how exactly this happened? This happened because of a form. There would have been a form at the back end which would have three input types. So these are the input types which we are using up one, two, three, four, four input types. And the fifth can be a button or it can be an input type. But if it is an input type, its type should be a submit. So this will actually be a button. As soon as you click on this button, there will be a post HTTP request which will be sent up to which page? This page. This is the action. It will be sending up to this page. <coughs> now, why we are reading about it? Because like there can be there can be a scenario in which like people do not fill up name and just send the button. For example, if I go ahead and like if we refresh up this page, so as I refresh up this page, I have not filled up anything and I'm just clicking on the send button. As I click on the send button, it says, oops, you forgot to enter the name. How does this know? So it knows because of the JavaScript. JavaScript is checking if you have already put up the name or not. If you have not put up the name, it will give you an error rather than sending it to the server. And how we are sending it? We are sending it something like this. We will create up a function in JavaScript, say validate form. And in this form, we will define a variable. This variable will have, this will hold an element. I have told you in JavaScript, variable does not have a type. Var can hold any kind of data. It can even hold the elements. So document.forms. So what is the form name? Name is my form. And what is the thing which we are looking for, which is F name. So if you remember over here, the name part, has f name this input has f name right so we are saying from this form we are looking for f name and the value so <clears throat> this value is stored in x if this value is null if you see that this is null if this value is null please drop an alert saying we are dropping an alert this time we are not dropping in confirmation right so if i again go back over here and like show you up this particular thing it has only okay it do not have two options yes or no no it has only okay saying that it is an alert that you have not filled up the name please fill up the name right and and like this is a post request so in in like browser whenever you hit up something from the url say if you are hitting up just tatwam advisors and you just hit an enter so you will see that all of these requests will be a get request none of them will be a post request Right. So we have already discussed that HTTP in HTTP post and put are the most commonly used post and get are the most commonly used like methods. So you can see that all of them will be a get request. So if I click any one of them, they all will be a get request, right? Because we are getting the resource from the server. And if we are putting up the resource, we have to use something called as forms in HTML to do this job. So the next thing which I want to discuss today is about W3 schools. So what you can do next? Next you can do is like you can go ahead towards W3 schools and look up the JavaScript course yourself. You should be comfortable enough to see all of these things by yourself. Again, this course was for beginners. I have already told like this is not an advanced JavaScript course i my intention was to make sure that people who do not know web development can go ahead and start with web development because seeing a video always make things easier than like going ahead and reading things from scratch by yourself so if, if you see over here like i have already covered like uh, i've already told you what is jquery you can see some format of jquery it is not very difficult now it should be easy so so we have some Java web APIs. These are very like less used and they are not, they are not like, they do not have a lot of functionality. We do not have a lot of functionalities which can be done. Again, if I scroll up, JavaScript like uh, supports JSON. So what exactly is JSON? JSON is nothing but just a format of writing of things. So I will just open up not notepad and like what exactly the format is. If I delete this up and like show you up the format. So the format of JSON starts with a braces and we have key and then we have value. 
So we have a comma, then again we have key one, and this key one has its own value. Then again we have comma, then we have key two, and it has again some value. So it is just a representation of data in a format so that the code can understand it. Obviously, we are we will not be going so deep into these things, but like JavaScript supports JSON. JSON is a generic term and it can be used in any language. Java, Python, uh, Django, like, uh, no, no, not, not Django, Django is just a server. So C++, then .NET, so any language. So JSON is supported in any language. What is AJAX? AJAX is something which should be covered in an advanced JavaScript tutorial. What is AJAX? AJAX, AJAX is asynchronous for asynchronous request. When you intend to build a single page application or when you intend to just change the part of a page, not the entire page. So what do I mean by that? Like you already know that whenever I type something like www.host-tune-perform.com host-tune-perform.org and if I hit an enter, so this brings up all the files to the browser and like shows up the first page if i go and hit the home page it will show up the home page it will go to the browser and bring home.html and show up the home page but this is not the case in our scenario so in a single page application what happens is like the whole page does not come back from the server rather only a part of the page comes back from the server and like you can <coughs> Just change that part rather than reloading the entire page. Again, these are some advanced topics which we will cover in Angular tutorial. So you can just know about uh, know about it as of now. So these AJAX requests are sent using an object called as HTTP XML HTTP request. So using this object, you create a, a variable. In a variable, you can create a XML HTTP request <coughs> variable type and then like you can uh, fetch up the data from the server. So we have already discussed about BOM which is browser object model and these are the different types of BOM. So we have discussed about DOM that you can control various DOM elements. So these are the different types of DOMs like you can control the navigation, you can control the events, you can even do animations in DOM. <coughs> so all of these things are doable with JavaScript. So again, JavaScript also support classes. So if you are familiar with Java language or any other language, so you must be familiar with uh, class orientation, which is like which comes up by OOPS concept, which is object oriented oriented programming concept. So JavaScript now supports classes as well. So we have already discussed about JavaScript functions. So we created up a function and like we called it in on click method right so javascript <coughs> also support objects what are objects so object is something which you can take up by like this so this is an object so person is an object it has the first name john its last name Doe, then age 50 so again the data can be formatted in various ways <coughs> you might feel that this is nothing but a string so why we are calling it as an object? We are calling it as a, it as an object because it, ha, it has a key value pair. This key has a string John, first name. This key has a string Doe. So we can say something like person dot first name, person dot last name. That's why we call it as an object, right? <coughs> then JavaScript supports forms. So we have already discussed about forms, the post request just now. These are variously different versions of Java. You do not need to install anything for JavaScript. It is already there in your browser. You just need to type in a file and link it with your HTML and it will run automatically with the browser. Then every programming language has a lot of things. Say we have already covered if and else <coughs> statements. Similarly, every language has arrays. Every language has math, some inbuilt functions such as dates. We have discussed about dates or math or like switch statement. Every language has loops. We have while loop, we have for loop. <coughs> Every language has these things. So you can go ahead and like read them like for like to become an expert in JavaScript and like 
for doing an advanced course in Java, JavaScript, you can go to W3 schools and like read them. I recommend this website to everyone. Even though we have a lot of other websites such as tutorialpoint.com and so many others, but like this is my favorite one, at least for JavaScript and like some native languages, right? So if, if I go ahead, like you can see that we have covered like many things in this course in like very short time in like one and a half hours we have covered a lot of things in javascript and i think that you should be good enough to go ahead and read about them by yourself now and become a chat so coming up next with this tutorial is bootstrap so to understand bootstrap let me open up my visual studio code again so I want you to take a focus again over here that the software which we are using is Visual Studio Code. It is not Visual Studio. Visual Studio is for the .NET development. Visual Studio Code is for website front-end development basically. Like this is a open source. Like I'm not sure if it is open source but like this is a free software from Microsoft which you can install and use. Visual Studio Code. So we have open up our website and we have this over here and let us discuss about bootstrap so to understand bootstrap let me delete up all the below javascript code and let me save it if i go back to my website and refresh it so we do not have anything so now let us assume here we want to make up another area another component and what does component is let us name it as Jumbotron. So if you see over here that we have a division which has a class Jumbotron and here I will just say bootstrap tutorial and say bootstrap is the most popular HTML CSS framework. Let us say like this right. So we have a h1 as the heading. So h1 is from h1 till h6. And P is for paragraph. Inside this, like this belongs to a division and this division belongs to a class, Jumbotron. So I want you to take your attention towards a thing saying that this particular CSS file, if I go ahead and find something called as Jumbotron over here, I will not find this word in this CSS file. So this CSS file do not have any word called as Jumbotron. Second thing which I want you to focus is like, bootstrap or any other framework like this works on something called as the class attribute you have to define this class attribute like this you say that this class belongs to jumbotron and how the effect will be in this jumbotron is defined in a css file which belongs to bootstrap so if i just minimize this and like save it and if I go ahead and like refresh up this page, you can see out here that this particular Jumbotron has a background gray color. And you see that there is a heading and then you say that Bootstrap is the most popular framework being used. So how is this background gray when we have not defined any kind of styling in CSS file? It is because that it has been inherited from the CSS file which we inherited from CSS. In a similar way, like the bootstrap has a lot of other components which can be used. So the next component which we will be using up will be a menu bar. So we will put up this menu bar between the tube light affected area and the jumbotron. So we will be putting it up over here. This will be the area where we need the menu bar. So I have already have the code. Let me paste it up. So you can see up the code from line number 28 till 51. So you can see even in our class style.css we do not have anything such as navbar, navbar extend md. So what is md? We will talk about it. Let us not talk about this as of now. This is a grid system which we will talk about in some time. And it is saying that this navbar should be dark color and this navbar like again this is good. So again we are saying that this is our navbar brand and we are saying that this does not link to anywhere and this is just the text between this a tag. So we can just say it our website as of now. 
and these are the buttons the toggle buttons so we will discuss about it in some time again and these are the link the menu options so i can say that this is in my home link then we have another page say uh, services by our company and then we have another page say contact us say for example we need another item so i will just copy it the li which is for list item in html and let me say it as let me change this one the below one let it be contact us let me change this one and say our clients and let me save it and let me go back to our website and hit an enter so you see that we have our website over here and we have a button if i click on this button we see home we see services we see our client we see contact us so creating up this menu bar has become so easy how did i create it i just went to w3 schools i copy pasted up this code this code i copied it from here this is bootstrap 4 i'm using the bootstrap 4 version nav bar so i have already discussed this is a navigation bar so in this navigation bar, if I go to the bigger version, we see that we do not have a button. Rather, all of them are like this, right? So it, it becomes so easier. I do not have to write up all the JavaScript code. I do not have to write up all the CSS part. All of them are like pre-written for me. I can just go ahead and use it for myself. If I go back again and hit, hit F12, I will come back to the mobile view. And you can see that now we have this button again. I click on this button, we have all these services. So you can see that these are the menu list item. Home services, our client and contact us are the menu list item. So let us begin reading of this code from very bottom, this part. So this part, let us just discuss about this part. So these are the nav bar links. So you are saying that this navigation bar should be a collapsible. So when we say that it is collapsible in mobile view, it should be collapsible, right? And how it is getting that it is a mobile view or not, it is getting using this MD. So this defines the grid system. It tells when you are on a mobile, please follow these responsive queries. So we have already discussed about media queries, right? Using those media queries and the CSS coding and all of these things, like they have prepared up this architecture. So you say that when the class is collapsed and so we have already also discussed this like this is not a single class. These are two classes. It is following two classes. One this and second this. Right. And it has an ID which is this. So these all things should be very same in your like code if you want to follow up the same thing because the CSS understand only these words. The bootstrap CSS and like the JavaScript thing only understand these words. So these words are fixed. You need to learn it. No need to learn it. Obviously, you can always refer some websites such as W3 schools for your work. Now, if I want to say that with home page, I want to go to www, let me say HTTPS and say www.google.com. With services, you want to go to another page, say, facebook.com and with our client you have to go to some other page say tatwamadvisors.com and the last one say you want to go to my website that will be host tune formorg so href is nothing but you're linking up your content with something and in the similar way this our website again i will just copy paste it and change it with my website which is this and save it so these are the list items and here you tell that if this is less than md so md is the medium sized devices if it is going less than md it should use a button so at backend what will be happening there will be the display property this button will only be displayed if the screen size is 
less than medium size if it is will it will be large this button will not be displayed right but if the screen size is less this button will be displayed and then after that this button can collapse and like these are like you need to mug it up there is an attribute called as data toggle there is an attribute called as data target so what is data target data target is referring up to this id it is saying that the data of this button is in a html tag which has an id this so this particular division has all the list items the ul in html is unordered list so we have ordered list in html we have unordered list in html in unordered list and in ordered list you can define up the list items what are they you can go ahead and like read it there is no end to technology so you can always go ahead and like read things up by yourself and and these list items like over here in this like these list item has a text which is bounded by a a tag a tag is an anchor tag in html again like i am reiterating myself that this tag has an attribute called as href which may creates an hyperlink on this uh, text how does hyperlink when you click it takes us to the new url so you also have to write this class name which is which says that this is a nav link this link belongs to the navigation bar so you need to follow the structure which will be very similar to this and after like following up the structure what you can change you can change up the data you can change up the number of list items you can change up this data right so if i go ahead and like save it and let us hit an enter out here and as i hit an enter we again see this website if i click on our website i will be taken up to the next page like which we have bounded up that is host-tune-perform.org if i go back and if i click on home i will be taken up to google this is what like we have bounded up right if i go back to services so we go to facebook.com but but in reality this this is not the thing which happens we actually like make reference to another page say if we are having we are going to the home page i will just say that home.php so it will pick up the page which is home.php from a server and like show us the home.php and in practical terms like we will be like here bringing up services.php so in this tutorial we are not working on creating of the server this tutorial is to make sure that you understand how to design a ui so in companies and big companies there are different people for designing ui there are different people for creating up the backend so when you say that you are defining up the ui you can go ahead and ask the backend developer like what is the page reference i should put up over here so that i can link up the home page to your next page right so so i am just giving you an example and like wanted to show you like how things look up let me put up things back on our navigation menu bar and let us move ahead to the grid system in bootstrap so now we will discuss about the grid system in bootstrap so what exactly is the purpose of the grid system in bootstrap the purpose of the grid system in bootstrap is to build up mobile responsive websites quickly so we have already discussed like to build up mobile responsive websites we use something called as media queries so these things have already been implemented in bootstrap and you can use it using this framework and like let us discuss how this framework works so how exactly this framework works is like let me open up a new tab and if you can notice like this is the width of our browser so this width of a browser is different on a desktop and similarly this width of the browser will be different on a mobile phone so we have divided this width as per different sizes and we say that we have a device which is large device which is small device which is say extra like uh, like extra large device which is excel so you can see that this width is divided into various classes in bootstrap so you have sm for small devices md for medium devices lg for large devices and excel for x large devices 
what is the meaning and how exactly we use it we will understand it let us understand like in bootstrap this width is divided into 12 parts so you can see that we have 12 parts we have one spam two spam three spam four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve here you see a combination of four spam four spam four spam four plus four plus four is equal to twelve again four spam and eight spam so so why exactly we are doing this we will understand it in a minute so let let me go ahead and like paste up the code over here which we are going to understand in this tutorial so i will be just copying up this code from w3 schools and like let me go back over here and paste it over here and let me save it so first thing you need to notice over here is like this particular code is based out of column sm3 which says that please make the columns with 100 percent for small devices and with devices having size greater than small devices please make this column width as the third part of what out of the total 12 length please make this device device length to be third part of the complete 12 length so what exactly this means let us save it and let us see it on the front end let me hit an enter out here so here you can see that here you can see that all of these like belong to a separate line so we can say that this particular line is covering up the entire width because this device has a width of like say 360 pixel that's why it is a small device and as it is a small device it is saying please take the column as the complete column if it is a small device or else take just the one like third part three parts out of 12 so if i just go ahead and hit the button over here so you can see that all all of them has come in a single line now out of all of the 12 length this is the like the three parts of out of 12 this is again three parts out of 12 this is again three parts out of 12 this is again three parts out of 12 so why this three part number has been picked because this is not a small device if it, this would have been a small device then this three part would not have been picked up so if i like minimize the size so let us see at what size this goes down so you see over here if you see the pixel at the very top at 576 they are coming in the same line but below 576 they are coming horizontally because 576 is the <coughs> defined length for a small device whenever it says that any width is less than 576 pixel it will treat it as a small device so in the similar way if if i go ahead and see out here that if we want to make this pixel more like if we want to make this come down even for a greater length what i can do is i can just go ahead and say rather than sm like i will just type in lg that is for large device right let me type lg i will just say lg so this is nothing but the text this is not important this is just the text so i can just say this is just the text it does not matter what is written over here let me say this is text 2 and let me say this is text 3 and let me say this is text 4 what matter is what is written inside this class right now it will say that it will take the entire length if the screen size will be lg or bigger than it so this is a predefined structure in bootstrap it always say like if the length is lg or bigger than it it will take the complete width but sorry if it is smaller than it if it is lg or smaller than it it will take the complete length but if it is bigger than lg it will just take the three parts out of 12 so this is how like the bootstrap works 
let me save it and let me show you up how things will come up now let me then enter and you see that it is just the text one two three four and all of them are coming horizontally like vertically right sorry vertically and now even if the screen size is greater than 656 if it is greater than 700 it is greater than now 750 still it is coming uh, vertically let me move ahead 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 and let us see where it being, begins like so the size is 991 so after 991 pixel you can see at the very top we are seeing up the pixel here at this place right so as the size goes below above 991 it comes horizontally if it goes below 991 it becomes vertically by itself so this is what we call as mobile responsive responsiveness and like this is what is the grid system in bootstrap so after reading of this grid system let us see some other things in bootstrap let me close up all the other windows and see some other things so we have already seen jumbotron we know like this is how it looks right this is how it looks so in the similar way we have a lot of other components such as we have a drop down such as these this is a component which is usually used in a lot of websites if you need to create something like this you need just need to follow up this code similarly we have a lot of other components such as a progress bar if you need to mention like what is the progress of your upload you can use up this progress bar similarly if you need to uh, use up some uh, other icons so in bootstrap we even have some icons so you can see some font of uh, like awesome icons you can use these icons you can see that we can try it ourselves i can just hit a run button and like these are the font awesome icons which comes up with bootstrap we have some cards we have some cards you can see you have created up a card if you want to show up the feedback of your customers you can use up something like this a card which is a pre-built option you just need to use up something like this like this is so simple right so you do not have to write up any like a haptic code you can just write you're just writing up some basic card uh, html with some predefined class types so you are using the upper division as a class card and inside this you are saying that the card has some body something like this so again these can be of different colors you can you can like how you can define up different colors you just need to add up another uh, class type which will be something like this <clears throat> if i go down there is something called as carousel which we have used so you see that this is a carousel you click on this button it goes to the next page right so these all are already built in built in things like you can use up a carousel like this so how you will understand this carousel it has a data target where is the data target data target is in some html which has the id demo so just find the html which has id demo where is demo demo this is the id demo this belongs to demo so again like you can see that it is saying that with first the first element which should be active in carousel should be this the second element should be this the third element should be this and then here you are giving up the inner carousel elements so these all things are linked with each other so what you need to understand is these classes name should be the exactly same what you can change is the number of items this is the this is an item inside this carousel so here we are not using ordered list and ordered list we are using divisions and this is how it will work then these are nothing but the controls what are the controls controls are these these buttons these buttons are nothing but the controls so there is a javascript there should be a javascript code because when you're clicking on a button the image should change to another image right that this is what the carousel is so you can see that we have this carousel and it has an icon you can say that carousel control previous icon and it is bounded in a spam and it is then bounded in an anchor tag which means that this will be taking us, taking us to an reference which is which has an id demo and what reference it is 
this is the reference. So whatever ID you give here should be replaced everywhere over here. It should be replaced here, it should be replaced here and then only it will work. So this code has a proper linkage and like it has a background CSS and JavaScript which you already take on from bootstrap. You only need to type in the proper classes. Similar way you have bootstrap forms. So these forms are nothing but something which looks good. So you can see that we have various type of forms. You have a single line form. Similarly, this form can change into multiple lines with uh, lesser width size. And if I go ahead, there is something called as pagination. So there is something called as pagination. So this is also very commonly used component in most of the websites. You, the website can have more pages to show up, right? Page one, page two, page three, as, as like in Google, we have the pagination at the very bottom. So you can define a pagination with a class called as pagination. Then what page items will be there? It is defined using an list item in an ordered list. So all of these components and types should be same. The pagination class should be used up with an ordered list, right? Then we have something called as different kind of buttons. So you might wonder like if you need to use some different kind of buttons which are in gray color, green color, something like that. So you just need to define a button of type button and then you say that this is a button btn is for bootstrap this is html button type then inside class this is the bootstrap btn which is defined in bootstrap css and when you say that it is primary the color will be this when you say that this button is secondary the color will be this when you say that the button is dark so the color will be dark and when you say that the button is danger the color will be danger <laughs> So there are a lot of things you have even have spinners. So when you're loading up something, it is not reached like to the top. You can define something like this. This is a combination of some animations using which this has been built up. So all of these things have been pre-built. What you need to do is you just need to put up this code. I can just say try it myself. And you see that this is working absolutely fine. Now I believe that you should be comfortable enough to create a website UI design by yourself. At least start it up and read up things by yourself so that you become an advanced player. Obviously, I'm not saying that we will not be creating up new things. So we are always there to help you. You can put up the comments below and I will be happy to help you. So to make sure that you reach us, please do subscribe our channel and stay tuned to make up your career in IT technology. This was Anand Goel from host-tune-perform.org.